We've had guests on, uh, Mr. Ortiz, that, that say this is all Amazon's fault. They just, you know, should have known what they were getting into. And the, the, uh, the privilege of being in New York City and being, you know, with, with all the, you know, smart people, all the educated people, all the colleges, all the benefits of living here, that should have been enough. You shouldn't need any incentives. You should just come, and they shouldn't have been so sensitive. Yeah, you, you know what, Joe? Uh, thank you, first of all, for having me. I mean, I, I feel like I'm a little bit in a bizarro world because I never would have thought that there'd be a topic in which the President of the United States, Andrew Cuomo, uh, a a Andrew Roth Sorkin, and, and ourselves would be on the same side of the aisle, but here we are. We are. The, the, the we Amazon are. pullout is so unbelievable. You've seen, <laughs> so you've seen the show, Alfredo. Cheers to you, Alfredo. I have. Yeah. I have. 25,000 to almost 40,000 jobs, I hear, lost from New York. And that doesn't even count the endless jobs that would have come downstream from, you know, the bars, the dry cleaners, all the related activity that would have come. That We calculated that about $12 billion of lost economic activity. Think about the, the hundreds of union jobs from the construction that would have gone to build that out. I mean, all that lost because one person, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, AOC as we like to call her, uh, decided that it wasn't good for New York, even though the two chief uh, executives of the state and of the city, and quite frankly, even of the district, because uh, the, the Democratic representative of the district thought it was a good idea, but AOC didn't think so. So she put up a fight, and on, the, on Valentine's Day, she spiked the football. So, you know, she basically is taking the victory lap while thousands of people lost the American dream opportunity. Alfredo, um, the real question I have uh, about the billboards is whether you think they're going to have a real impact in terms of what's going on in the political process in New York, which is to say that two years from now, um, in Queens or elsewhere, do you believe that the politicians who were uh, in position at the time will be held to account? Well, you know, remember, uh, uh, Mayor de Blasio, first of all, was for before he was against it. I guess, but you know, when you think of Governor Cuomo, Governor Cuomo is still saying he doesn't even believe what, what's happening and how this has actually happened. But I think really what we want to do is take the step back because this is a bigger discussion, we think, and we're excited about the, the kind of feedback we're getting, the kind of coverage we're getting, because this is this idea of socialism versus capitalism or free enterprise. One of the things that we like to say is that socialism takes, but capitalism creates. And we can see what socialism did here. It took away 25 to 40,000 great paying jobs. We calculate somewhere between $4 billion to $6 billion in lost wages for New Yorkers, right? But on a broader basis, we have to have this conversation. Uh, you know, and I applaud President Trump for really drawing that sand in the line at the State of the Union and saying this will not be a socialist country. But you have to tell you, it's a little sad to think that we are now at a point in history in the United States where an American president actually has to make the claim that we will not be a right. socialist country. Alfredo, though, but here's, here's, the, here's the conundrum as I see it. Um, and, and we're on the same side of this, this particular Amazon issue. And yet at the same time, it feels like this, this particular set of facts makes it hard to argue uh, for the issue of socialism uh, versus anything uh, versus capitalism in large part because people look at the what the Amazon transaction they call it corporate welfare well you know one of the things and, and Andrew one of the things that actually you made in your tweet uh, frankly the statement here is that we are at a point also where we've got economic illiteracy in this in, in, the, in America right I mean we have to take the time to educate uh, uh, Americans and our citizens, you know, in our schools, in our colleges, about how public policy impacts the pocketbooks and the livelihoods on a daily basis. That's one of the things that Job Creators Network, we do. It's called Employer to Employee Education Program, something that our founder, Bernie Marcus at Home Depot, did day in and day out when he used to run the organization, is have these conversations, honest conversations and dialogue with his employees right. about how these policies impact where, their families. Where do you stand more broadly, though, on the idea of tax incentives um, on a state-by-state -state basis? Look, we hate, we hate crony capitalism overall, right? But in this particular case, this is the way business is done, bids are done. I mean, look at even the DNC. I think they're in the middle of kind of where is the convention going to go and there's a bid process going on and, right. you know, hotel submit. This is just the way business is done, economics is done. This is just the way, uh, again, you know, free enterprise works. And so tax incentives, from my perspective, again, if they bring in, look, look at this deal overall, $30 billion, and again, I'm not a math major, but $30 billion roughly in revenues that are going to be coming in from tax, net out the $3 billion in incentives. And of course, the president even chimed in last Friday about these incentives. He probably could have worked a better deal, he said. Uh, but still, net, net, $30 billion minus $3, uh, $27 billion, that sounded like a pretty good deal, plus the jobs.